Hey everybody, it's Norman Will, back for another episode of Behind the Garage Door. Today we're going to stay right here in Plant City, go hang out with a guy named Fred, and make sure you watch till the end because just when you think we're done, we're not. Headed out to see Fred, figured I'd take the coolest thing on the lot. Well, we made it out here to Fred's place in Plant City. Holy wow, Fred, what a beautiful piece of property, fantastic garage. This is fantastic. I'm so glad we, actually Fred and I met at a car show at the dealership a week or so ago. And, Last Sunday. Yeah. yeah, or Saturday. Saturday, Saturday, yeah. yeah. And uh, glad that we were introduced. Yeah. Uh, can't wait to uh, see exactly what is behind all, your, your, all of your garage doors. So this <laughs> is going to be an interesting show. We're standing in front of this one, but we're just gonna kind of walk our way down through here, Fred. And you, we already, there's so many garage doors that we just already went ahead and opened them. So let's start right here, 29 Model A. Tell us all about this one, Fred. 29 Model A came from uh, Ohio. I went up there and found it on the internet, bought it there. Uh, it was already done. I've added a lot of stuff, a lot of the chrome and a lot of the little details I added to it. But the basic body was all complete. How long ago did you get it? I bought that probably six, seven years ago. Oh, okay. So you've fiddled with this one for a little yeah, while. Yeah, it's, it's been here for a while. It's up on jacks and everything. Do you yeah. get it out and drive it every once in a while? Mm, it's been a while since it's been up, yeah. since I told you about having to need another garage to move furniture in for a few. <laughs> <laughs> well, when but, you've got the kind of garage space that Fred has, you can use a little bit of it for furniture as well. Um, beautiful car. What color is it? Is it black or is it's it all blue? Black. No, it's all black with the, a natural tan interior. Is it a rumble seat? Yes. It does have a rumble seat? Yes, it does have the rumble seat. Cool. So we move down to the gold car. Tell us about this little thing. This is an O2 Prowler. I went to Ohio deer hunting one time. Didn't get a deer, but the a Chevrolet dealer that was hunting with me at the time. He, uh, we were sitting having a beer after the hunt and I said, I bought an SSR and he said, oh, we just sold one. He said, I said, well, I was really looking for a Chrysler Prowler. And he said, that's funny. I sold a, an SSR to a guy that has two Prowlers. Are you interested? He's got one for sale, you want it? <laughs> I didn't get a deer that year, but I did get a Prowler, so I bought his Prowler. I don't think I've ever seen a gold one. Yeah. Is that kind of a rarish one? Yeah, there's one? not too many not too around. Many gold ones. Uh, and if you'll notice on the front end, the fenders uh, have the bumpers, but we took the bumpers, they're oh, kind of, yeah, the, yeah. Uh, they're ugly. Yeah. I got them, but we took the, those off. The, I, I think all. one of the smartest things any Prowler owner should do, first thing, get rid of those bumpers. And I love the paddle shift in the thing. Oh, it does have paddle shifters yeah. too? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, nice, the only cool. problem they ever did, they should have put a V8 in these things. Just talking about that the other day, because the Prowlers are a, a really neat car. Mm -hmm. and, but in my opinion, and, and I think most people's opinion, is that they missed the mark on not, even a small V8. Right. You know, some, something, it's just the, the V6 in it, This right? one I kept on, I don't, I'm not into motorcycles, but up on the Blue Ridge Parkway, you know, everybody loves motorcycles. Mm -hmm. park. I've taken that on the park. My wife and I would take picnics all the time in the on the parkway and it also went through the trail of the dragon i was gonna say it was i yeah, was just getting ready to ask trail that. Of the dragon oh that. that's yeah. cool very yeah, very yeah. cool so the next vehicle in this next uh garage it's actually the same garage next door this is a very this is your ssr you were talking yep, about this, this is my is half a, a corvette half a, yeah. <laughs> it's got the corvette engine in it and it is kind of rare because it does have the six speed in so it. six speed SSR that can't that can't be very uh, you don't probably see very many. No, you them. see a lot of them, but most all of them automatic. Automatic. Now yeah. there's a special story behind this truck. So can you share that one with us? Bought this in North Carolina, a Chevy dealer. I was up there uh, looking for a company truck, and this was on the showroom floor. And I ended up buying it. I said with stipulation, you've got to keep this for a month because I got to go back to Moffitt Cancer Center and have an operation. I got. The operation came back a month later. My wife dropped me off to pick up the car. I drove and not more than a block away. The phone, my cell phone rang. It was my doctor saying I was cancer free. So this is my cancer truck. <laughs> this is your cancer truck. And I think in your good luck charm too. Yeah, I, I do don't think, too. Fred, I, I mean, I, I love don't, it. I don't want to think I would ever get rid of that one. The only thing, my wife loves this car, but she has to sit on a cushion because you can't see over the hood. <laughs> you do sit kind of low on yeah. it, don't you? Yeah, but it's great. It's a great 
They're super Fun cool vehicle. trucks. So we made a small pit stop here in the middle of the two sections of a garage here at Fred's, at Fred's place. And I kind of spotted these other things that kind of look like this from the window. I thought they were coral that you spray painted silver, but that's not what this is. No, that is ant homes. <laughs> What's really left, left of them, I pour aluminum down those. I used to spray them with poison, and now I tr feed them candy and everything to get them to, <laughs> <laughs> to nest in my yard so I can pour liquid aluminum down there. All of them, every time you pour, you never know what you're going to get, how small, how big. And it's kind of a unique way of seeing nature. It, it absolutely is because I don't, you know, Will and you, well, you walked in and you said, you know what that is? I said, coral. And Will goes, nope, it's ants. And I'm like, <laughs> those are ants. But now I, it's yeah. kind of like a, it's like a, a negative of, of what it actually is. And you've done a bunch of different ones. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of them away. Oh, that's so yeah. cool. How many, how many of them have you done? Oh, probably. You got lots of yard yeah, here, so. 20, yeah, I've probably 20, 25 of them. So getting cool. ready to pour one Saturday. I've got a pretty good mound out there, so I'm going to pour one Saturday. But That's cool. Ant, ant mounds Cat from underneath. Colonies, yeah. So basically, it'll be upside down. Yeah, this is what came out of the ground, just like that. Just like that. So you just dig it out. Yeah, you dig it hole and flush it out with a hose. Oh wow! And then you get a lot of clean and get all the roots and dirt and everything out of it. That's super cool. Never seen that before. The first on behind the garage door. Yeah. So thanks for that. <laughs> so we uh, done with our little pit stop to see your yeah. to see your ant ant mound things. Which, by the way, that was super cool. Uh, back to the garage doors, three more that are open. I'm an old hot rod guy, so this immediately caught my eye. Tell me about your T-Bucket. 23 T-Bucket, another internet find. Uh, it came from Florida. It originally, I understand, was built in Texas, okay. and then came to Florida. And of course, you can see what kind of power it has. Oh yeah, that. nasty little small block. And uh, it's, it's a fun little car, it also has a Coca-Cola cooler that one side is a cooler and the other side is for storage for your luggage. So, so I, I remember going to car shows when I was a kid and seeing those Coca-Cola cooler trailers, but yeah. you don't see them very often no, anymore. They've used them, most of them, yeah. Yeah, yeah and most so and it matches the car perfect. perfect yeah. Got the big fat Mickey Thompsons on the back. Yeah. What kind of horsepower does it make, do you think? About 350. Okay, nice. Yeah. Moving right along, coming down to the Corvette. Tell us all about this little gym. This, this one, my wife happened to go to Stingray ah. one day, and uh, the salesmen are pretty tough when they know the wife <laughs> is going to drive off with it. So no they wouldn't what. even knock 39 <laughs> cents off of the bill. He said, no, I've got you. She's going to have it. And, she had it. <laughs> so this is my wife's. What year is it? This is C5? Uh, uh, no, no, this oh, is uh, uh, 90, no, 99. Okay, so 99. Yeah. Convertible. Yeah. Beautiful. What's the name of this color? I'm going to go find it. Silver. It's a platinum silver. Okay. And of course, I love the tan with it. It's a real. Oh, it is a tan interior, yeah, isn't it? It's, a, I think, one of the prettier combinations in the Corvettes that you And get. tan top. Yep. And a tan top. Beautiful car. Thanks for your business, by the way. Appreciate that. <laughs> all right. Now, this car is very, very special to you. So tell us all about this. It's a 1983 Zimmer. I bought this down at, when Zimmers were made down in Davie, Florida. And I, I think they made around 250 to 300, something like that. Okay. Liberace used to have one of them uh, that was in a museum in Las Vegas yeah. and everything. This was white, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, and it had candelabras That's on right. the outside uh, there, you know. Yeah. But it has German rose-cut crystal vases in the back seat, uh, Recaro seats. Uh, it's got. It's built on a four drivetrain and four engine. It has a 305? 302. 302, yeah. Okay. 302 Ford engine in it. But uh, So yeah. this was a company that would take Ford chassis and drivetrain right. and then drop this body on top of it. Yeah, and this the, they're not thin fiberglass. If you feel the fiberglass fenders, they're, they're beefy, yeah. It's right. a heavy, pretty heavy car, but it, it runs real good, and I've I got about 14,000 miles on it, but I've had it since 83, brand new, and plan to go out with it. Going out with it. <laughs> it's got T-tops also? Yeah, T-tops. Wow. Yeah. What a cool, cool car. Yeah. I don't, you know, I've, I've seen them on TV, like I said, Liberace had one, and uh, I don't know that I've ever actually seen one in person. A lot of the movie stars, they were kind of flashy, so yeah. a lot of them had them. Back and you've then. been through a lot with this car. Yeah, it's two divorces. <laughs> <laughs> but, the only thing I have left from those two marriages is well, this car. <laughs> there might be some rice in the back seat or something. <laughs> of the one. All right, cool. So we finish up with five of these garage doors, and we aren't even close to done here at Fred's house. So 
follow us out to yet another building where Fred's got some extra cool stuff. So a whole nother building here on your property, Fred. And by the way, thank you again so much for inviting us out because this is, you've got a treasure trove of cool, I mean, not only the cars, all the cool stuff that you, that you have decorating your walls and everything. Uh, I thank you. I just, I like to collect. <laughs> <laughs> and you collect good stuff too. Yeah. That's the other thing. So when I met you um, not too long ago at the car show at Stingray, this is the car you brought. Will and I had not even talked about coming out to do it behind the garage door. He took a picture of this car and put it on our Instagram. I'm like, oh, we're doing it behind the garage door with this guy next week. He goes, no way. So tell us about this Corvette. I, of course, I like Dale Earnhardt. Yes. And if you notice on YouTube, uh, Junior has the original one that he and his father built. He said of all the cars, he'd never sell that car because he and his father put it together. Makes sense. Well, you can't have that car. No, he's not going to come off <laughs> He that. ain't going to come off. So you make a facsimile, you okay. know? So that's what I did. I ended up getting, find this Corvette in, uh, I think it was Chattanooga on the internet. Brought it, went up and got it, brought it back and completely redid it as close as I could. I didn't go through the engine, then put roll bars in it. Yeah, them. So but it's a street it's car. A, a street car okay. for shows, and that's what it is. So what did you have to do? Ground effects, obviously I did, the spoiler. I had new hood, spoilers, ground effects, the wings, all I did, you know, all everything else. And then and then had to find somebody that could make all of the the graphics. I, all the graphics were done right here in uh, at a local shop here in Plant City. Yeah. Uh, no, down in uh, Sefner. Oh, okay, Sefner. I got you. I got you. Mm -hmm. So, what year is it? It's just it, it, the real one is a 2001. This is 2000. Okay, so same they're car. So they're yeah, very, very similar. Yeah. But yeah, when you rolled up, I saw you roll up in this thing. I'm like, this guy is a number three fan. Yeah. <laughs> and then we actually got the chance to meet, and what a great car. Okay, so we continue the three theme with your Dale Earnhardt car here. So tell us about this car. This car is from the internet okay <laughs> and it happened to be that uh, one night i was sitting by my fire pit and my wife was babysitting and i had a drink or two and i saw this car on there and i put a bid on it <laughs> well about 11 o'clock or 11 30 they text me back that i'd been outbid and another drink or two <laughs> oh or yeah watch so this I, so anyway i put one more bed in and went to bed that night. Well, it was over at two o'clock and usually most of these cars are sold in the last few minutes. Yep, yep. I think everybody that Saturday night partied, partied and forgot, and forgot. the bed. <laughs> and I, next morning I wake up and I bought the car. It's so, like I bought what? <laughs> yeah, this car originally came from Daytona, the original buyer, and then he took it to Cleveland and used it for his uh, business, his advertising and so forth. Right. This car has been definitely raced, as you can tell, it's, but it they could not verify that Earnhardt actually drove it in a race, but it is well been used. They take parts off of them. Scavenge parts from, from one to another. From one to another. Does it have a drivetrain in it still? Oh, yes. The really? Engine, engine drivetrain, and sometimes I can get it started in it, but it'll oh, pull the windows out. Oh, this, the, especially yeah, being it's about, loud. All of the All of the NASCAR oh, engines It's are definitely nasty. a runner. Oh, that is that is so cool. So how, have you been a, a three fan forever? Yeah, just since I got into cars okay. 10, 12 years ago. All right. Know, and, but uh, I've always admired Dale Earnhardt, and I, this is why amen. I bought that. Absolutely. It's, it's cool to have something like this in your collection when you're that big of a fan. Yeah. Really, really cool. All right, Fred, when we walk in this building, Obviously, this is the first car you see, but this, I was like, oh my God, he has, I didn't want to say the Wasp, because I know the, <laughs> the Wasp is, you know, not going to be here, but where did you get a Wasp? Is this um, Coker's car? Did you buy from Coker? No, I did not buy. I admired Coker and watched him build the one. He had several things on the internet during the stages of his build. Yeah. And I admired that. Well, you can't have the real one. The real one is in the Indianapolis 500 Museum. Yes. And that was like the only one that was made. So what do you do? <laughs> Coker built one like it. Fred Morgan, Fred decided to build one like it, you know? Yeah. So uh, Ray Haroon, a little short story people don't know about these cars. Ray Haroon won the first 1911 Indianapolis 500. His was a one-seater. All the cars that year and all the other years earlier were two-seaters. The mechanic rode with them as a safety issue okay. to watch out for them. He did his original one with a one-seater and they said that's not safe. Ray Haroon came up with the idea of a rear-view mirror. 
This is the first car that ever had a rear view mirror on it was the Indianapolis this Marmon Wasp. I did not in know that. In 1911. I did not know that. Yeah, the first car. And they asked Ray Haroon after the race, did that help you? He said, I couldn't see anything. It was vibrating so much. <laughs> he said, I couldn't see anything out of it, you know. But I built this. I started with a 1925 Nash that had a straight six in it. Okay. The original car had a straight six in it. And that's why I did it. And I built the complete thing. Under the metal is all wood. Uh, because that's the way years ago they were built. Yeah. Uh, most of them were out of wood. Sometimes they would wrap them uh, with metal. But uh, it's... So you say you built this. Did you form all the body panels? Did you do everything? I, or you I, had, a I did all the wood. I okay. built this car completely out of wood. Okay. I took it to a friend of mine, a fellow that does metal work in town here. And he wrapped it for me. Oh, okay. wrapped all the wood? He in, wrapped in, is, all is it steel my, or is it aluminum? Or? Uh, yeah, it's aluminum. Okay. And some of it's steel, but okay. mostly. Yeah, like this, these are yeah. steel, and yeah, that's so the steel, body panels right. are aluminum. And who did the paint and everything? The paint's fantastic. He painted, this gentleman, his, he painted, and then I brought in a pinstriper that did all the graphics, all the gotcha. pinstriping and all on it. So when guy. you can't have something, what do you do? Yeah, build it yourself, <laughs> you know? It doesn't, now, another story I don't know if you know, Ray Haroon met with a friend of his was working for Firestone Tires at the time. Mm -hmm. And his friend told him, he said, Ray, don't run that car over 75 miles an hour. This car? This, his car. Okay. Don't run it over 75 miles. He said other cars were doing 80, 85 miles an hour and passing them. Ray Haroon ran at 75 miles. He won the race at 74.8 miles an hour, the Indianapolis. He changed four tires in 500 miles the person that came in second changed 17 tires. So Ray Haroon listened, signed, listened and didn't run because the tires held up at 75 miles an hour. Wonder if that's where the saying slow and steady wins the race comes that's from. That's right. <laughs> that is apparently a good Wow, one, that's a great it, story. Yeah. What a cool car. What yeah. if it, now, do, how often do you get this? I have to ask. I, I, I haven't even taken to a show, believe it or not. Ever? No. Oh, it's coming to a show. It's got to probably come out to a show. It, it needs to come to a show because people know people know about this car, yeah. especially like you're originally from Indiana. Yes. So people from Indiana, the north, the northwest, the, the uh, Midwest, they know northeast. They know about this car, and they know that there's only one, and they know that Coker did one. Yeah. But to, for you to have one down here, that's so. It looks very accurate. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't know, it was a labor of love. It took me almost two years to put it together. I love it. But, I love it. Uh, you know, you do a little here and a little there and come up with ideas, but. Uh, you did well on you this. You know, one, like sir. I say, I'm not into a lot of horsepower on cars. That's great, but I like the different variety of cars. Yes. And you, are, you are not uh, brand specific. Yeah. No, no, that's super cool. That's super cool. Now, you built this one but even before this was my first example your... to try and then okay. i went to this the first one was this one that won the 1912 indy, uh, 500. indy 500 i built this out of a model t four cylinders typical model t and tried to replicate mm -hmm. dawson's this is his original car down here yeah. i tried to replicate that as close as i could and that was my take on that if you can't have it Build it yourself. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we've talked about a Corvette. We've talked about the two race cars that you've built and your race car, your Dale Earnhardt car over here. Now, you told me, this, if you can summarize what we were talking about outside a little bit ago, you have a long history with Indianapolis and the 500. So yeah. you have a, a um, fondness for the pace cars. Well, I grew up in Martinsville, 25 miles south of Indianapolis. So racing Indianapolis 500 was the biggie there. It's kind of like Daytona in Florida. Yeah, in Florida. Indy is the race, obviously, in the Midwest. Uh, I was very fortunate. My first Corvette was a 66 Corvette. I was in graduate school at Indiana University working on my doctorate, and I belonged to a Corvette club. Mm -hmm. We were at the qualifications one year, our club, and we had 1,600 Corvettes going around the Indianapolis 500 at one time. Holy! It was one of the largest, many? 1,600. That can't be single they just, file. No, they, they ran us a couple of times. They said keep it under 100, Oof. but it was hard to. Oh, but wow. we had 1,600 Corvettes that and ran. And what year was that? <laughs> don't ask me. I don't know. <laughs> 
I'm going to say it was uh, 60, probably 68. Oh, wow. Yeah, somewhere in that. So you, you have the fondness for the 500, yeah. and so you've collected quite a few well, Let me cars. tell you a short story sure. that I like to say. Ray uh, Penske that bought the Indianapolis 500 here a couple years ago mm -hmm. had a store, or people asked, how did he get involved in racing? And he said, uh, Lee Waller took him to lunch one time when he was 14 years old. Lee Waller won the 1951 500. My uh, thing that I have with that, when I was 14 years old, Lee Waller took me to lunch along with my dentist who introduced me to Lee Waller, and he was a 500 mile track dentist. So I had at 14, 15, 16 years old, access to all the pits, all the race cars I've met. Back then I met all the drivers. Right. I used to have my annuals, the high yeah. school annuals, huh, I've lost them. Oh, no. <laughs> and all these wonderful signatures in oh. there of all the drivers. I've sat in almost any car that I wanted to. They would let me. So were you just right place, right time? To, yeah. to well, my dentist was, the, okay. was oh, a 500 it. mile. And he knew you were a big fan. Yeah, yeah he was. He, you know, too, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, he, and he, they all came to get their dental work done that month of May, it's his office in Indianapolis. Makes sense. And they, While in town. Know, in town. Yeah. And so that's how, and he knew them all. That's so They cool. were all great friends of his. That is so but, cool. But, uh, yeah, Dr. Walter Dean, he was a great, great dentist and great friend, and he introduced me to Lee Waller. Wow. I'll never forget. Excellent story. But anyway, so that's why the pace cars. I okay. always love shiny, bright pace cars. And this is the 98, as you know. All right, yet another section of the, the, it's a good thing you're a contractor because you have a lot of stuff and you need to build lots of walls. Yeah, <laughs> I like building. I guess you do, and you do a really good job. This building, you're, you're the building where your other cars are next to the house and everything else, wonderful, wonderful, uh, seriously, outside of the car stuff, fantastic work. Thank you. Beautiful designs. So we go back in here and we take a look at these two pace cars. Let's start with this one right here. This is a, the 2009 they kind of call it the sister Corvette to the 78. Okay. And uh, it's a uh, six speed, as you can see, retractable top convertible. The 78 Eight. pace car, um, see, growing up when I grew up, the C3 Corvettes were the Corvette. Mm -hmm. So this one with that silver interior was always, I was always very fascinated with that car. So how long have you had that one? Where did you get well, it? Well, this one came from down around Lauderdale and the attorney had this uh, car. It was just, it was really taken care of, right. good care of it and everything. Uh, the only thing that he'd redone, he put a $10,000 black the black was redone. Oh, gotcha. So, yeah, because it had some, he said, rock chips and stuff. And yeah. So he, he put, back then he paid 10. But uh, the story I was telling you earlier, when these came out, the dealer in Fort Pierce wanted 5,000 over sticker. And I just, I just couldn't see, I didn't have the money to pay that much over stickers. So I thought, well, a few years later when I started making money, I paid 15,000 over <laughs> sticker for it. But anyway, I got me a, cause that was, that was my favorite car for years and still is one of my, I think it's one of the best designs Chevy's ever come out with. I, you know, we've got a 68 uh, Corvette at the dealership and I, when you get in these C3s and you get down in the seat and the steering wheel telescopes back to you and you look out at those fenders sitting up high, I just think that that's just the coolest yeah. ride, the coolest everything. Yeah. Huge fan of the C3 Corvettes. Uh, Fred, I cannot thank you enough. Thank you very much for coming. I'm, I enjoy sharing I, my hobbies and everything. You with know, people. not everybody does. And, and, then, and, and that's what I like, and I, especially young kids. Yes. I love school kids or something. I, I, anybody that's interested in cars or something, I love them to come and see that's stuff. Right. Because who knows, that might inspire somebody else. Absolutely, 100%. I mean, I grew up around cars. My dad drug his first car at home that, uh, that he and I built when I was five. Mm -hmm. And that's when I caught the bug. And I love going out and seeing other people's collections and going, I don't care if it's one car or if it's 13 cars, I like going out and hearing the stories and you know your passion from 14 years <laughs> old and, and everything else is, this has just been a, a real treat. And all your cool stuff too, <laughs> by the way, all your cool stuff. I like to collect. <laughs> Keep building buildings and keep yeah. collecting, Fred. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming, Bob. We appreciate it. We're going to head back to the dealership and wrap it up. All right, I told you, 
Gotta always make sure you stay till the end of all of our episodes because you never know what's going to be next in a whole other building. Fred, thank you so much. I never thought in a million years, you know, seeing a wasp like that, especially a hand-built one, even though it's a replica, it was still so cool to see that car. Hand-built. Just like Fred said, if you can't have it, build it yourself. Make sure you're here next Thursday for another episode of Behind the Garage Door. Stingray Chevrolet, relax, enjoy the dip.